Hi everybody, it's Webflow Joe with an effin' sweet Webflow hack. In this hack, we learn how to use a 100% customized set of slider dots in your Webflow native slider. Let's see how it works. We're in the live example and we see a native Webflow slider. This is on autoplay, it's changing automatically and you can see we have a custom set of slider dots. This would be very difficult to recreate with the native dots that come with the native slider. But we have our own set and it works on autoplay and it also works on our manual click. We're inside designer and we have our native Webflow slider component. We are on autoplay. You do not need to be on autoplay for this hack to work, but we're gonna use autoplay for the hack because there's an extra step when we get to custom code. The, the classes on the actual slider do not matter. And even the class that we've applied to the native nav doesn't matter. We're setting the native nav to display none. We don't wanna see it. The user's not gonna be interacting with it. We are creating our own set of custom nav dots. So here we have the Hack9 custom nav wrapper. This class also doesn't matter. But what does matter is the Hack9 custom dot class. And this Hack9 custom dot class can have any type of styling to it. So we've set some width, some height, some margin. We can do anything. We can change it completely. It's totally up to you, very customizable. And what we're also going to do is give an add-on class to one of these custom dots. And this add-on class is going to be active. And it's going to tell us what the active state should look like. So you can see on the active class, we have a change of background, we are changing the height, and on our original non-active dot, we are going to set some transitions. So we have the height transition and the background color transition, which will work when we are changing our active class. So we can have this really smooth transition of slider dots and we are going to control how they work inside code. Let's break down this code line by line. Before our closing body tag, we're going to insert our script. When the DOM is ready, we're going to get a reference to our custom dots. Here we have hack nine custom dot. And we're going to store that as a variable called custom dots. And for each custom dot, we're going to listen for a click of the dot. So here, when the dot is clicked, our custom dot, we are going to remove and add classes so visually our custom dots are responding with the slider. So we look for the active class and we're going to remove that class. This is the previous active dot, the previous active slide, and now it's no longer active so we're gonna remove that class. And then we're going to add that active class to the dot that was just clicked. So here we're listening for the click of this dot. And now down here, we take that same dot that was clicked and add that class to it. Great, now visually our custom dots are working great. What's most important about this is this last line. This is going to tie the custom dots to the Webflow native slider. What is happening is when we click our custom dot, we're actually going to tap or click the native Webflow slider dots. So we're targeting the W slider dot class, which is the default class on our native slider dots. And for each custom dot that we tap, it's going to tap the equivalent Webflow dot of the same index. So what does that mean? If we tap custom dot one, it's going to tap Webflow dot one. If we tap custom dot four, it's going to tap Webflow dot four. 
And this is why it's really, really important that you have the custom slider dots and the nav dots in the same order and have the same amount of them because it's just lining up dot one to dot one, dot five to dot five. And when you click the custom, it's going to click the native dot for you. Now, if your slider is not on autoplay, it is a non autoplay slider, it is fully manual, you can stop here. This is a full complete code set for that instance. If you have an automatic slider, these slides are moving on their own. We have to add more to this code so that we can listen to and respond when the slider is in autoplay. If your slider is in autoplay, we have to add some extra code to react to the autoplaying slides. Above, we were working with manual clicks. We were listening to taps and clicks. We're not doing that anymore. When the slider is in autoplay, things are happening without any user interaction. So we're going to set up something called a mutation observer to listen for class changes, whether it be through a user tap or automatic. So we are listening for class changes on the W slider dot. And every time we see that W active class on the W slider dot, we're gonna mimic the same thing on our custom dot. So we will find our hack nine custom dot and add the active class to it. And the same thing as the taps, we're lining up with index, the first dot with the first dot, third dot with the third dot, and making sure that the active class, whether it is W active or our own active, is lined up perfectly. We are going to define this set observer function, which is going to listen to these changes, and then it's going to remove our active class and add it back to whatever dot is in the same index as the native dot. And we are going to then run that function down here. So now we're listening all around. We are listening for taps and clicks when the user interacts, and we are listening to automatic changes that happen with the autoplay. Thank you so much for checking out this hack. Please clone the project. We have the entire hacks project available for clone. Start learning how these hacks work and use them on your live site. We're always releasing new hacks. So if you want to be updated, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want a super simple plain text email when we release a new hack, sign up at finsuite.com slash hacks dash updates. If you want to request a hack, we'll check it out and see if it's possible in Webflow. Go to finsuite.com slash hacks dash request. That's effing sweet.